The next step of our project is to play with XPath. Before I show you how XPath works, I will explain some basic ideas about this concept. XPath enables us to treat an HTML page as a tree and access specific elements by indicating the path to them. Um, I assume you already understand some basic HTML stuff. Um, so here we go. The um, HTML page can be represented as a tree. The top element is the top node is body and besides that we also have head and uh, maybe a few others. I'm not really a guru in this area. So now we have two branches. Inside the head we have several other sub-elements. For example, title, meta and maybe something else. And then the body of the HTML page is made from all the content we put into it. For example, it could be a table and inside a table we can have um, tr and uh, td tags uh, which can be repeated multiple times and so on. So inside of each of these we can have uh, a div. Inside the div we can have a paragraph and in that paragraph we can have some text which is written with bold. Uh, we can also have um, somewhere here we can have a link which is the a tag and so on. So for example if I want to access some text which is uh, written in bold on the on this uh, web page I would have to point my mechanism to this specific node. Um, so as you can see this yellow line it indicates the path from the root node to the actual element we're looking for. So this is just a very very brief um, explanation. Not entirely accurate perhaps. I'm not uh, very um, not a huge fan of web development but this explanation is good enough for me and it's good enough for um, our current objective. Uh, you can play with XPath in any browser. For example, in Chrome, uh, you can right-click on uh, blank space on the page, select Inspect Element, and uh, you can type your XPath query somewhere here. For example, this is the search box. I can say title and bam, there you go, it has highlighted the node for us. Uh, we can also open the JavaScript con console and there is this command x when we run this it gives us uh, the node we are looking for. You can also do this in Opera same thing, uh, right click on empty space, uh, choose inspect element, uh, then switch to the search tab and you can uh, make sure XPath is selected here and then you can do the same thing. It shows us that some node was found. However, I prefer to use Firefox because it has uh, one interesting advantage. Um, first, you have to make sure that the Firebug extension is present. Once you run Firebug, uh, you must also install another extension called Firepath, which has some interesting advantages. Uh, so let's get started. You will now see why I prefer Firepath to other ones. Uh, the first step is to extract the quote. Let's go back to our HTML page, which was um, somewhere here, yes, in test quote. Um, so there are several places we can extract it from, as you have seen uh, previously. One of them is the title tag, but uh, I chose 
not to do this because in this case we have the quote itself followed by the name of the author and then we would have to do some additional magic to separate this in a, in two distinct pieces um, you can do that for example by taking this whole string and then looking for the word by and then dividing the whole text in two parts uh, before by and after by but I prefer we do it some other way um, so this is the first occurrence the second one the third one and this is the place where I think uh, we have uh, the easiest uh, solution to, to the problem. So we have to explore the HTML tree and look for a form element, the name of which is quote. And then inside of that element, we have an input element, the attribute value of which contains our quote. And notice that it doesn't have anything else like uh, the name of the author or the category and so on so basically in this case we will be able to extract the pure data as is without having to do any kind of transformations um, to figure out how to use xpath uh, you should consult some uh, documentation if you're interested uh, you can look at my bookmarks uh, the tag is xpath and there are several uh, pages which explain uh, which functions XPath provides and how they can be used. In any case, for now, uh, just follow my lead and uh, you will see the basics. This is the window where we type our XPath query. When the query starts with two slashes, it means uh, that we will look for nodes anywhere in the page. And we know that the node we are looking for um, is an input, the name of which is text. Uh, let's see how many input nodes we have in general. So there is this one. Uh, there is another one. Oh wait, uh, the name of which is text, not the type. So we have one input, but it's your name, then friend, email, then two more inputs, but they have different names. So basically, uh, this is the only input element on the page, the name of which is text. So this is how we get to it. First, we type the name of uh, the type of the node we're looking for then we know that text is a property uh, oh wait not text but uh, name the name of this node has to be equal to text so we type this and when you press enter uh, notice that firefox has uh, selected it for us here in the source code of the page now the next step we have to do is to extract the value to do that we extend the xpath query with this and now you see it has somewhat refined the result now less text is selected and now one more step we have to get just this string here between the quotes without the value which precedes it. To do that, we can use the string function available in XPath. And this is our result. As you can see, it's just the text. No other parts are present in it. And if you're wondering where this string thing came from, uh, you can go to the list of uh, available functions. And you see string is right here. Press that. And you can see that this function uh, 
takes a given argument and converts it into a string. So that's what we needed. Now let us go back to Firefox and copy this one because we will need it later. I'm going to save it here. So uh, the quote itself can be extracted with this XPath query. Uh, we have two more things to do. The um, quote author and the quote category. Uh, let's begin with the author. One interesting thing in XPath uh, in uh, Firefox is that you can select the element you're looking for and observe that uh, it has calculated the path to this node. Of course, uh, you can see that it's very, very, very long and it's an absolute path. Um, it's not a very good idea to use it. Um, I don't think it's uh, worth discussing this right now, why such an absolute path isn't a good idea, but just trust me, uh, this isn't the best way to do this. So we have selected uh, our target. Now let's explore the source code and see what kind of indicators we can use as something to hold on to to identify uh, our target. Notice that uh, oh wait, we were looking for the author. So let's click on that one. Uh, notice that it's encapsulated in the font element, uh, the class of which is text. So let's try to find um, this one. Let's get rid of that. Uh, we can look for font the class of which is equal to text. Uh, notice that we have five matching nodes and the fun part is that uh, Firepath has highlighted all of them for us. So this is the first one, the second one, the third one, number four and number five. I suppose that uh, once we have selected uh, this set of five nodes, uh, judging by the structure of the site, we can see that the first node, uh, the first matching node is always the breadcrumbs here uh, at the top of the page. Uh, the second one is the quote itself and number three is the author. So let us access the third node. Uh, you can do that by following this approach. So if you type one, that's the index of uh, the first occurrence. If you use two, that's the second occurrence and three is what we need. Uh, you may be surprised that this thing isn't zero indexed. That is, uh, they are numbered one, two, three, four, five, rather than zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, this is how the X path um, is designed to work. Now, we have selected the exact node uh, which contains the data we're looking for. Then the next step is to dig deeper and uh, take this uh, contents of the B tag. So I'm going to type B. And we are here. Now you can see that we have selected the actual node including the B tag. And the next step is to extract just the text. So we use the text function. Notice that uh, at this point we have selected just the name of the author. So this is what we were looking for. I'm going to copy this one and uh, write it here. Finally, uh, our last objective is to get access to the love string, which is the category. And based on the previous research, we know that the category is the fourth node uh, of the font type, the class of which is text. Let's expand this and see that. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, the category is inside an A tag. 
So we have to type slash a. There we are. And as in the previous case, we have to access just the text. Here we go. So love is now selected. I'm going to take this and write it down here. OK, so that's it. We have now devised several XPath queries, which give us access to the nodes we are looking for. Those nodes contain the data uh, we need, the quote, the name of the author, and the category. In the next step of this tutorial, I will show you how to use XPath inside Python. Uh, because so far we only experimented with XPath in a browser. Uh, but this is not what we need. Eventually we just want to grab all the quotes, uh, put them in a database, and use the database to display fortune messages in the command line. I hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial. Feel free to ask uh, any questions. I'll be very happy to answer them.